Hello fellow painters, uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, Games Workshop announced a couple days ago a new warband for Warcry around ghosts. Um, I thought that I will find for you guys some cool alternatives for your Warcry warbands or any other tabletop games that you are playing. It will be the second ghost that I'm painting in my entire hobby life. That's why I uh, have a very very high hopes that you're gonna enjoy it. Um, that's why grab your paints, brushes and let's start. Starting off I blended vile white ink and airbrush thinna together using this mixture with my airbrush to craft a striking zental highlight. My goal was to capture the essence of light and shadow on the miniature. The result is a nuanced play of tones that adds depth and realism to the miniature. Next, I opted for Army Painter Maggot Skin, blending it seamlessly with Airbrush Thinner before skillfully applying the mixture across all the skin areas using my airbrush. I initially went for a 50-50 mix, gradually layering it three times for a nuanced effect. However, the final choice on the number of layer rests entirely with your artistic preference and desired outcome. Moving on, I concocted a 50-50 blend of Army Painter Gravelot Grey and Maggot Skin, delicately applying the mixture to the lower regions of the skin where light is less prominent. This not only adds subtle variations but uh, also serves a corrective measure addressing and enhancing the deeper shadow on the muscles. For the next phase, I introduced Vallejo or the Neil Duck Egg into the mix, ensuring a smoother flow by adding a drop of airbrush thinner to my airbrush. Great name by the way, totally not messed this up. My concentration with this color was directed towards the upper sections of the miniature's body, emphasizing the most elevated areas. Before I have applied Army Painter Tyrion Navy to the skirt, I have uh, covered the skin with uh, masking putty, carefully coating the darkest section while leaving strategic space for additional colors on the brighter areas. Continuing the process, I introduced Runic Grey into the mix, 
diluted with airbrush thinner for optimal application. Skillfully sprayed onto the skirt areas, this shade serves as the middle tone, setting the foundation for a gradual transition. Thoughtfully leaving space for white on the most elevated sections ensures a nuanced plant adding depth and dimension to the miniature. In this stage I turned to Vajajo White Ink, blended with airbrush thinner for precise application. Using the airbrush I fixed the most prominent areas of the skirt, introducing a crisp white tone. This step not only refines the overall look but also brings attention to the highest points. Taking a more hands-on approach, I utilized Army Painter Bonimeter with a regular brush uh, to cover all bones and spikes on the miniature. To achieve a more textured effect, I applied multiple layers, especially focusing on the lower section of the spikes. This step adds a tactical dimension to the skeletal elements, ensuring a detailed and lifelike representation of these features on the model. Continuing, I employed Vejo Bone White, delicately sprayed on the upper segments of the spikes. This step highlights the elevated portions, creating a natural gradation from darker to lighter tones. The use of an airbrush ensures a seamless blend, enhancing the overall three-dimensional appearance of the spikes for a polished and eye-catching result. Transitioning to detailing, I opted for Army Painter Grim Black to meticulously cover the miniature's hair using a regular brush. This step brings focus on the hair, providing a solid base for subsequent layers and allowing for intricate shading and highlighting techniques. Adding dimension to the hair, I employed Vejo Light Grey in a dry brushing technique, skillfully applying it to the strands while leaving the deepest recesses in black. This method imparts a realistic texture to the hair, capturing the subtle interplay of light and shadow. The contrast between the light grey and the underlying grim black enhances the intricate details, resulting in a visually appealing and lifelike representation of the miniature's hair.
For the finishing touch on the hair, I utilized Vejo White in the dry brushing technique, carefully applying it to the most raised elements. This step accentuates the highest points of the hair, creating a subtle highlight that adds further depth and realism. I concocted a 50-50 blend of Vallejo, Eau de Nil Dark Egg and Vallejo White. Applying it with a dry brush on the most elevated areas around the head and the face. This careful mixture adds a subtle yet captivating hue to these prominent features, providing a harmonious contrast to the overall color scheme. The white pigment will give me the ideal density for dry brushing, so do not be afraid uh, to mix air colors with white. Introducing Vallejo Cavalry Brown, I used a regular brush to paint the rope on the miniature. This step adds a distinct color element, bringing attention to the details of the rope while providing a visual break from the surrounding features. Continuing with detailing, I employed Vallejo Ochre Brown to paint all the raised elements of the rope. This step enhances the three-dimensional aspect of the miniature, bringing out the texture and depth of the rope's design. For a nuanced touch, I blended Vejo White and Army Painter Ronnie Gray in a 50-50 ratio, employing a dry brushing technique on selected areas of the skirt. This approach adds subtle highlights, contributing to the texture and depth of the fabric. So um, this is your middle step. If you like the results by now, this is also your end step. So if you're happy, glue the miniature to the base and it is ready to go to the battlefield and fight the hordes of uh, your enemy. Uh, but because I will not play with this miniature on the battlefield itself, I will go a couple of steps further. So. I will add some light reflections, some oil cool OSLs and of course a very cool base um, to the miniature. So stay tuned if you like the recording till now, don't forget to like it and for the rest and wants to see the results of the whole composition, stay tuned and watch the uh, whole video. In preparation for object source lighting, I utilized Vejo White ink blended with airbrush thinner, delicately spraying it onto the exposed belly of the miniature. This pre-highlighting technique lays the foundation for the upcoming OSL effects. The use of an airbrush ensures a smooth and controlled application, 
facilitating a seamless integration of light effects on the miniature. Building on the pre-highlighting, uh, I introduced liquid text Vivid Lime Green, spraying it on the prepared areas of the miniature's belly to serve as the primary color for the OSL effect. This vibrant hue creates a compelling contrast against the surrounding tones, infusing the belly with a captivating and otherworldly glow. To simulate the central light source in the OSL effect, I introduced Vallejo Bulb Green, sprayed at the core of the illuminated area on the miniature's belly. This choice of color enhances the realism of the light emission, creating a focal point and intensifying the overall atmospheric effect. The careful application of Bile Green adds a dynamic touch to the OSL contributing to the sense of radiance and depth in the final portrayal. In a final touch to intensify the central source in the object source lighting, I used Vejo White ink mixed with airbrush thinner, sprayed at the core of the illuminated area on the miniature's belly. This step adds a high tendon brightness and brilliance to the focal point, enhancing the illusion of a powerful and concentrated light emission. For the base detailing, I opted for Vajho White and employed a large cosmetic brush for a dry brushing technique. This step involved skillfully brushing the entire base, creating a subtle highlight and adding texture. The use of a cosmetic brush allows for a broad and even application. To add visual interest and break the monotony of the black color on the base, I mixed Army Painter Gravelot Grey and Tyrian Navy in a 50-50 ratio. This blended concussion uh, was then skillfully sprayed on the base, introducing a subtle yet captivating variation in color. To infuse a touch of vibrancy and mystique, I used Army Paint Up Purple Swarm with a regular brush to paint all the candles on the base. This step introduces a rich purple hue to the candles, adding an element of magic and enhancing the overall color palette. In preparation for OSL, I utilized Vajho White ink mixed with airbrush thinner to pre-highlight the candles and their surroundings using the airbrush. This technique lays the groundwork for the upcoming OSL effects, emphasizing the areas where the radiant glow will be most prominent. Building on the pre-highlighting, I introduced Vejo World Purple, 
sprayed on the prepared white areas surrounding the candle as the primary color for the OSL effect. This bold purple hue creates a captivating contrast and serves as the main source of the illuminated glow, infusing the surroundings with a mystical and enchanting ambience. To accentuate the main light source, I employed Vejo Squid Pink, expertly sprayed on the flame of each candle. This bold and vivid color serves as the focal point, intensifying the glow and adding a dynamic element to the OSL effect. Expanding the OSL effect, I used Vallejo World Purple with the airbrush, spraying it on the skirt of the miniature. This step contributes to the spectral ambience, introducing a subtle purple glow that emanates from the candles. For a finishing touch, I created a dusty environment on the entire base by heavily diluting chrome like light matte with water and pouring it especially in all the recesses. Afterwards, I adorned the base with tufts and moss, providing a final touch to the scene and creating a visually compelling and completed diorama. I hope that you have enjoyed this one, if yes, don't forget to comment down below, like the recording, subscribe to the channel and I will see you next week. Bye bye!